Hey everyone, we're here at the Civitas Conference and our guest is Michael Gagnon from Healthy Nevada. Welcome, Michael. Oh, thank you, John. Yeah, so tell us, what's your perspective on TEFCA and QHANS? So I think TEFCA is an important step in the interoperability landscape that's happening in the country. Um, it really is the service that now will allow the national networks to communicate with one another. It sets up the trusted exchange framework, both the sort of documentation and legal agreements you need to make that work. And then it creates interoperability among those networks. So whether it's Commonwealth or eHealth Exchange or Care Quality or Epic, um, it allows you to plug into one of them and connect to all the rest of them. And, it, and it's an important service, but it's also kind of a limited service. It has query capabilities for patient records. Um, the responses are usually a care summary record, which have been around for a long time. Um, providers find those to be useful, but often maybe too verbose in some cases to be the most effective. Um, those records are you know, long care summaries, and um, those services are, are very helpful and useful to providers, but, so, you know, but maybe also data overload. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's an absolute requirement of what we go forward, but probably not everything that the provider needs. And that's where we think that HIEs can actually fill in that gap, provide uh, additional services that are needed, uh, such as event notifications, delivery of information, uh, orders and results delivery. Awesome. And how do you see the concept of health data utility evolving? Where are we at today? Where's it headed? Yeah, that's a that's a great topic. It's kind of like the other part of the other side of the coin, shall we say. Um, and this is where I see where HIEs are really evolving to be health data utilities. And and I think that they have kind of uh, it's kind of the HIE plus certain new characteristics. Uh, one is that they should have mandatory participation of providers in a community. And while that sounds a little uh, maybe over the top, at the same time, it's required in terms of information blocking. And so it does make sense that that happens. It should have state legislative support to be, uh, to be designated as a utility. Uh, and because it's going to be utility effectively a monopoly, it should also have some kind of level of public oversight. Um, and then the fourth factor is it needs public funding. Um, so uh, our network has had private funding for its entire uh, 11 years of organizations. The most successful networks in the country have both public-private partnerships with both a public uh, component and a private component. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. You're very welcome.